Good morning and welcome to Madison Live. I'm David Ramirez and we have a great show for you guys today. Music from John Roberts and Lindsay Zarniak is joining us live in studio. Sydney, what else do we have? So when you come back to campus, you see that girl in those mm. clips. What's it like now to have a platform to do master classes and to do talks like the one you did last night and to have rooms full of people that want to hear what you have to say? Kind what is that's that like? A, that's really nice, and that's a good question. Um, does run out I remember what However, that was like oh. and how much fun it was. So what does that make you feel seeing those clips now? Embarrassed. Now looking <laughs> Embarrassed and sad. Embarrassed? No, but... Um, you just mentioned midterms. Um, they were last week. You guys have had a pretty busy week, I assume. <gasps> crazy week. <laughs> crazy exciting, but crazy week, yeah. Yes. So in 2014, in the last midterm elections, student voting turnout was only at 8.8%. Yeah. Now, <laughs> um, that's pretty low. A little bit. <laughs> um, it increased significantly this year. Yeah. Why do you think that is? And change. <sighs> Earlier this week, I had the opportunity to speak with the author and activist on everything from his fight against the gun lobby, his daughter's legacy, and turning unimaginable grief into a renewed sense of purpose. Here's just a glimpse of our conversation. It's empowering, it's beautiful, but it's painful. And the whole time I was reading it, I couldn't imagine how hard it was to go back in and unpack that pain of what you and your family went through. Why did you decide to do that? And why did you decide to write the book? No. I'm sure, as both of you guys know, at, this, at the local, state, and federal level mm -hmm. of government right now, there's a lot of cynicism. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't trust that the leaders that they elect are working for them. Mm -hmm. How are you going to build that trust again at the student body here? Bueno, Sarah. Ciao, como esta? Ah, me escuto por favor. Moscato, sí. Sí, a vino bianco. Sí, gracias. In today's ever fast-paced world, all it takes is a family dinner to bring people together. And I heard, Darian, that you had an experience with a family doing just that. Yes. Yeah, to make Jamie look good. Absolutely. Now, um, considering you were involved in, in, like you said, four processes like this in the past, including right. hiring Mike Houston, who has mm -hmm. been very successful here. Correct. Do you feel the pressure? Absolutely. Uh, I think it was easier when we had a football team that was going 6-6 for two or three or four years, and the fans had lower expectations. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> uh, with the, the success... Past, uh, I mean, just looking at this list, uh, bills to increase minimum wage incrementally, public comment on period on raising tuition rates, these are all issues that affect us. They affect everybody here, you know, the student body. So why is it important when it comes to the civic process for the younger constituency to get involved, to speak out like you guys are? Thank you both for being here. We really appreciate it. Like he said, if you want to get involved in SGA, there are plenty of opportunities, and we can continue to be involved in the civic process as college students. But do you enjoy it? I do. Why do you want to be a, a news anchor? Oh, so you're turning it on me Yeah, now. yeah. <laughs> oh, it's the same thing you said. I love to do it. Okay. I love to cool. give the news. I love to talk to people. <laughs> Like you. Ah, uh, thank you so much. Interesting people like you with the good stories to tell. I hope so. I yes. Hope so. Now, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate <laughs> thank it. Thank you so much now for let's having see me. What, we'll be back on Madison Live. Now, what separates this project from some of the others that you've done in the past? Because I know that your career has taken you all over the world making documentary films. So what was special or different about this project? Not only are they entertaining, they are informative, and there is a message there that although we've come so far, there's still so much work to do. So how do you think your work through CMIS pushes us further towards that more just and equal society that Martin Luther King dreamt about all those years ago? Um, well, so, yeah. well, some of these issues too that um, we're fo these events we're focusing on, mm -hmm. intersectionality, women yeah. in politics, entertainment, the military, sexual and reproductive health, mm -hmm. there's stigma around topics like that. How sure. do you engage in those conversations and remove that stigma. It's also important to keep in mind seasonality, which means you only eat what's growing right here, right now. So I want to thank you so much again for taking the time uh, to speak with me. And, and just on a personal note, I just want you to know uh, that her presence, her memory is felt um, every day here in this studio and every show that we do here and every project we work on across the hall. Um, her legacy here is alive and well, and, and it's due in part to the work you're doing 
and to the incredible person she was. And I have no doubt that it'll it'll live on. Thank you, David. She does live on. She's uh, she's right there in the studio with you and right here, you know, with me. For those that do feel like they don't know where to get started, mm -hmm. they want to do something, they want to make a positive change, they want to be involved, but they don't know what that first step is. Right. What would you guys say that first step is? I think Your career, for everyone in SMAD and any journalism and broadcast student, to many of us, you're the goal. Okay. Being here at this school. Thank you. So, they should aim higher, though. You should, you know? <laughs> so what is the best piece of advice you can give to all of us that look to your career and look to you to see what we want to do in the future? It all started with a question. What story do we want to tell? We wanted to tell a story that shows the triumphs, the successes, the pain, the beauty, and the complexity of the human experience. And we found all of those things in the barbershops of Harrisonburg, Virginia. In a time of such division, vitriol, and fear of the other, these barbershops were a microcosm of everything good that binds and connects us. Now on top of inertia and the clothing line, you also have a very active YouTube channel where you put up workout tutorials, nutritional information. Um, can you explain kind of how you've expanded how, what you do in your own life to help others? So from our table to yours, thank you so much for watching, and this is Urbino Now.